check it out five degrees outside right now it was seven below last night I don't think it's going to get above seven or eight today the Martin Frankenstein guitar we're going to bring him back to life today I do have some good news uh, straighten the neck Put a straight edge on the neck and back here that the uh, bridge where I'm going to have to take off is not nearly as much as I thought I was going to have to take off. Um, hold on. I don't know if you can see that or not but anyway I've already got the measurements. I straightened the neck. And I don't have to take nearly as much off of the bridge as, as I thought I was going to have to take off. Uh, the measurements show 260 force has to come off of it, which is about a 32nd of an inch. So that's good news. Um, the bridge has a little bit of an arch to it. I'm going to keep that instead of just sanding it all flat. When I get finished you shouldn't even be able to tell that it was ever worked on. It's going to be a lot cheaper than a neck reset. It's really not bad enough for a neck reset but it's it does need to be corrected. This needs to be taken off this material on the top of the bridge. Of course I'm going to, have to take the saddle uh, down by taking material off the bottom of the saddle uh, I can't take enough of it off the way it is now to lower the, the action enough to play. You can actually get two quarters underneath these strings. That's how high they are. But, uh, yeah, we're going to tear into this thing and save about 500 bucks and bring this old Martin guitar back to life, make it playable again. And I'm going to teach you how to do it. It's Wednesday. It's uh, warmed up to like 20 degrees, I think, since uh, I showed you that picture I took earlier. It's still cold outside. Okay, let me uh, get the strings off of this thing. And uh, let's get started. This is really hard to see, but... These uh, MMV Martin guitars, like I said before, Martin only made like 2,000 or so of these for uh, Guitar Center and Musician's Friend, I think. But one thing I wanted to point out on this bridge, if you look, the pinholes are offset parallel to the, uh, the saddle, where the saddle sits, and that's very rare. Usually the pinholes on most all Martin guitars are straight across but on the MMV models they if you can see that this is your first string and you can see the distance from here to the pinhole compared to the distance from here to the pinhole all of the the holes are offset in, in uh, with the uh, with the saddle I don't know what their intention was doing that but that's one difference in in this guitar and most Martins. I guess, uh, I don't know if it was an experiment they were doing or what. Look at those grooves. They're, that's really sloppy. I'm surprised Martin done that. Those grooves are they're huge, man. And they're not, they've been cut wrong. The angle of them's been wrong from the factory. So once I sand that down, I've got to get the right uh, breakover angle on the string where it comes up out of those holes. Um, they made these guitars in 2005. MMV, that is actually a Roman numeral. I found out that M in Roman numeral is 1000. So MMV would be 2005 and that is actually when they built these guitars. I don't think they're all exactly identical, but I enlarged the sound hole in that one. I've seen them with, uh, it, it, this one has 
uh, golden tuners on it. The tuners are gold, and I've seen them with uh, just like like a chrome uh, tuner. Anyway, I wanted to point out that difference in the bridge, how those pinholes are offset, because I've never seen any other Martins like that, um, other than the, these MMV models. So, okay, we're going to uh, get down to the nitty gritty and start sanding on this thing. Got to take one thirty second of an inch off from here to here, this whole entire top. And with the next straight, and it is straight now, that's, that straight edge should slide, come right back and just slide right over top of that. It should be parallel to it. So uh, let's uh, sand. Well, I went ahead and masked the sound hole off just to keep from getting any more dust and necessary down inside the guitar. Of course, we'll sweep it all out once we're finished and you don't want to breathe that stuff this is this looks like ebony I should say that ebony dust could make some repairs with that if need be mix it with super glue and fill in places in the fingerboard that are war but I'm not going to do that right now I just want to get this uh, taken down where we need it like I say you don't want to breathe this stuff, so we're taking extra measurements there. <laughs> I've already got my uh, I've already got it marked to a thir one thirty second of an inch to come off. And I figured by using a belt sander, I can keep that slope. And uh, instead of just being flat on top. So that's what we got so far. I uh, need to take just a tiny bit more off. Anyways, you can see how I'm doing it. I don't know who flattened those frets out like that, but, well, I, yeah, actually I do know who did it, but we're not going to mention any names. It wasn't, it wasn't me. I do know who flattened those frets out, and it was not me. Uh, like I say, I've never worked on these frets before, on this guitar, before right now. Gotta get me a drink. I've been sick, man. I've really been sick, people. I had pneumonia. Had a, had a type A fluenza, and it turned into pneumonia. And it's been really bad. I still got it, but... It's better than it was. I put a little bit of crown, tiny bit of crown on these frets, like a semi crown. I just want to check and see. Yeah, there's a high one. That fret is high. <coughs> Yeah, we got lots of dogs. Lots of doggies. There's another high one. That's four and uh, let's see, five, six, four and six. Just wanted to check this. Wow. Several. Oh, yeah, no, that's me. Dummy, if I gotta get the rocker on their level.
Um, just checking for half rates because there was some buzzing. So that was. It's this fret right here, the fourth fret. So I'm just going to use the crown file and run across there a couple of times. Probably will be just enough for that. Then I'm going to show you a fancy little tool that's worth its weight in gold. Look there. Yep, still a little bit on this one side. Yes. Take a break. Well, just a second. There. I gotta take a little more off of it, but you, you get the idea. It's a high fret here, and whichever one the other one was. I'm gonna take them down with the crown file just enough to make them all level. Then I'll show you how to make them all smooth. Hold on. So I took off this fourth fret with the crown file put a little bit more of a crown on it. It was high um, and you can see there's no more rock you don't want any high frets. One high fret can mess everything up and you should when you when do it when checking your fret levels like this you should check like you know all the way not just in one place but like all the way across I thought there was another high fret here but I think it was just just me those are those are all good so uh Sweep that off. Alrighty. I'm not going to bore you to death with uh, watching me do all this. Where's my tool? Um, here we go. This little jewel has got 1500 grit paper on it right now. I can go across each one of these frets very gently one at a time and uh, no I'm not going to mask off the fingerboard because I've done this so much I feel quite confident I can do it without ever touching the board Ooh, there's a rough spot but it's gone This will smooth down any, um, oh yeah, man, we're going to have to put some, I still don't have any linseed oil, we're going to have to put some, uh, I guess the only thing I have is lemon oil, but it's better than nothing, I guess, it's some sort of oil for the neck. Those are looking fine, man. So, like I say, I'm not going to bore you to death with me doing this. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down each fret and uh, smooth each one of them out with this handy little tool in the, the back. There where I was showing you on that bridge, those, those slots where, where the string breaks over and comes over the saddle. Actually, the strings are not even touching it. The slots are cut out so big, the strings doesn't even touch. You know, that's a... Uh, I don't know why Martin did that. We're going to fix all that, though, too. And it'll all be good. Just like new. Better than new, actually. Oh, yeah, man. You can't even tell that... 
anything's ever been done to that bridge. I mean, it looks, it just looks like, a, well, I'll shut it to you in a minute. But in order for it to decrease the value of the guitar, they have to know that it's been done, you know, and it's a, probably if it was a shitty job, or, you know, where you could look at and see that somebody had shaved the bridge, if it was that much, where they, like say, if they did a shitty job, it would probably decrease the value of it, but no more than I had to take off of it, and you cannot tell it. Let me get you a shot of it, if I can. I want to check uh, that fret again first. Oh, they're good, man. I've already checked those. They're flat. The frets are... We got strings. I went ahead and set the neck relief, but I want to show you how to do that, how I did it. I'm going by Martin Specs on this neck relief. So, uh, the string height down here at the 12th fret Martin specs are uh, 3 30 seconds is what they recommend as a minimum and 764 as a maximum on the bass string at the 12th fret. Action we're talking about. Um, the treble side I think is 1 16th minimum and 5 64th maximum. I like 3 64th on the treble side and 564 on the bass side myself is what I like. It's a little different from the Martin Specs. But the neck relief, I want to set it's uh, the Martin Specs on that is ten thousandths. You, you got to have that neck relief to allow room for the strings to vibrate when you play it. The strings actually move in a circular motion, so you have to have enough neck relief there when you hit a note that you know that the string can still move and not buzz again the frets or whatever anyway to set your neck relief assuming you have a martin or are using martin specs you gotta put a capo on the first fret i've already done that capo the first fret Note about the uh, down past the 12th fret, about the 14th, maybe 15th fret. Just shove that string down with the capo up at the other end. And then you want to take a feeler's gauge. There's a feeler's gauge. And you want to measure about the 7th to the 9th fret. Like I say, I've already set this. So you can see that that, I hope you can see that. It slides right in there. It's perfect. It's ten thou. Ten thousandths of an inch. And it's it just goes in there and that's all. So according to Martin Specs, that's correctly set. I didn't cut out the uh, this slots in here anymore because they're so screwed up already. They're way too wide. I don't know what they were thinking when they cut those out. I left that alone. Didn't have to do anything to that. Now, back to the action here. Um, if you remember before, we could put two quarters underneath there. Easily, easily put two quarters underneath there. Now I have one. Well, let me get this capo off. Now I have one. It's tuned up to pitch. And you can see that two quarters will not go under there. They almost will. But it won't without shoving the string up. So I'm gonna, I need to get that lower. I want to get that. I like to get that down to uh, 564. Like I say, Martin recommends on the base side 330 three seconds minimum and 764 maximum. I like 564s myself. So in order to do that, I now have room to shave the saddle. 
I have to take the saddle out and shave off of the bottom. I've already marked it with a pencil across here. So, if you... If you want to lower your action at the 12th fret, let's say... Say you want to lower it by 20 thousandths. You got to take twice that amount off the saddle. I have to take if I want to if I want to drop this twenty thousandths from where it is now, then I have to take forty thousandths off the bottom of this saddle. And I think I have room to do that now since we shaved the bridge. It gave us more room for adjustment on the saddle, and it's very close right now. I mean, I'm not going to be able. That's about all I'm going to be able to take off. Um, and I've already marked it, so I'm going to uh, loosen the strings up, pop the saddle back out, shave the bottom of it off, and um, it should set this action up here at the 12th fret right at 564. We're very close to that. So, rather than bore you to death watching me take the strings off again and the saddle out, I'll be uh, back in a little while with a fix, and we're going to breathe life into this guitar. Now you know how to set your your uh, re neck relief, and if you use Mar Martin Specs, you, you know, like I say, set it at ten thousandths with a capo at the first fret. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Three thirty seconds. Actually, I'm looking at 664s, which reduces down to 330 seconds. So it's perfect. It's exactly what we were shooting for. The saddle is very low, but it still has some room for adjustment. And you look at that bridge, if I can get the light right, I can't see, but you tell me, can you tell that that bridge has been shaved? There's no sign, no evidence. We only took one thirty second off of it, so you know that was very little bit. I didn't even have to to uh, ream the pinholes out no more than that was. They still fit, but you can see we we still have some saddle adjustment if need be. All this happened without a neck reset, without spending five hundred bucks, or in my case several long hours of work we managed to save this guitar it was unusable as you saw in the other videos it was unplayable I mean there's just no way that it was uh, of any use uh, to recap we did some some fret dressing that I, that I hadn't planned on doing but the guy that worked on the frets the last time really had them screwed up. They're all good now. They got a semi-crown because I really don't like that much of a crown on my frets. Flatter, I like. Uh, but they were too flat. It looked like a ran a, a uh, well, I saw, I watched the guy do it. He just ran a diamond block uh, file board over it and let it go with that. And they were, they lost the arch, the arch that was in it. Anyway, to recap, we redid the uh, set the neck relief ten thousands. That's what uh, Martin specs call for. Minimum specs on the string height at the 12th fret is three thirty seconds, and that's exactly where we where we are. Uh, we shaved the bridge to avoid a neck reset, a major, uh, very expensive, time-consuming job. And in doing so, that gave us more room to shave the saddle to get the action down within specs. There again, it doesn't depreciate the value of the guitar any whatsoever. I mean, you know, someone could probably measure that and not even know that uh, a 32nd is missing from the bridge so we saved this guitar um, it's playable again I'm really happy about that because I'm gonna need it real soon 
our band I think is going to start recording our uh, second CD real soon. By the way, we still have CDs for sale if any of you guys want one of our band, Wolf Creek uh, Bluegrass. Uh, not your typical average bluegrass band if you've seen some of the videos of us. Anyway, that's another thing. If you want uh, CDs, uh, drop me a line or inbox me or, or something and uh, I'll give you the info how to get a hold of our uh, current CD. We're going to start recording again real soon and this guitar is my favorite for recording. It doesn't have a lot of volume as I said before but man I do love the sound of it. I checked all the frets. It's perfect. Every fret is perfect. We used the rocker on them. You gotta excuse me, I still can't breathe. I've had pneumonia, folks. I was really bad sick. And then last night with no power, and uh, of course, like I say, we had backup heat, but a lot of the old folks around here, Mon Power, man, you guys need to get off your asses and replace whatever faulty equipment you. That's another story. I won't even go there. I'm just happy that this guitar plays again. It's saved. Absolutely perfect. It's playable. I am happy again. And I'm going to do a review on uh, the Fishman system in this guitar. I'll hook it up to an amp and play it and you can listen to the 
many different things you can do with it. It's the truest sounding um, pickup preamp that I have ever used or heard. Uh, the condenser mics that's inside the hole, I have it pointed near the 12th fret, which it seems to be the best place, or 14th fret, to mic an acoustic flat top. I should have made mention before that mic in that in this guitar, that condenser mic inside the hole is on a gooseneck, a flexible gooseneck, so you can bend that mic around and point it in different directions to get all kind of different sounds. I prefer it pointing up toward this area. To get it seems to get a much truer sound that way but anyway look for that stay tuned to my channel subscribe tell your friends subscribe man we gotta we, you young guys need to learn this stuff because like i say not always going to be old guys around to show it to you and it's a lot harder if you got to learn it yourself without any uh, direction or but anyway i'm going to do the the uh, heavy metal guitar riff, uh, rock and roll riff thing incorporated into bluegrass music, flat picking. You can also use it in country or whatever. We'll go through scales. Uh, we'll go through uh, arpeggio. You should learn uh, like something like that uh, forward. to do that backwards I try to learn everything that I learn forward and backwards and then that gives you a lot of uh, I need to practice that one but it gives you a lot more uh, it expands your usage of that stuff but we'll get into all that stuff in videos to come if you guys keep subscribing thank you new subscribers i appreciate it man i've been seeing that count go up and i like what i see thank you so much tell everyone that you know uh to subscribe and let's uh let me teach you what i know like i say i don't know a lot of things but what i do know i'm sh quite sure of and one thing i am sure about uh, this guitar is saved, it's fixed, it'll last a lot of years to come before I ever have to do a neck reset. If, uh, worst case scenario, I, I do have to do a neck reset sometime years down the road and I have to replace the bridge because, you know, I shaved it. No love lost, no depreciation in value. You can't even tell that it's ever been shaved. You know, you don't want to do a neck reset unless you really have to do it because it's very time consuming. It's you got to steam the neck off and determine what kind of joint it has and where you need to steam exactly. And it's just a whole bunch of it's very time consuming. Well, I I worked around that and managed to save this guitar. It's playable. I guarantee you, I could take it out tomorrow and get more than what I paid for it out of it. Guarantee it. But it's not for sale, and probably never will be. So uh, thank you guys for watching again. Thanks for all the subscribers. I hope some of you learned something in uh, maybe how to set your neck relief on your own guitar, how to get measurements. Uh, just little tips like that I've picked up over the years along the way. Um, hopefully it will help some of you to save you some money, you know, save you a few hundred bucks or more than that maybe. A luthier. I'm more of a guitar tech than a luthier. I don't build guitars. I don't know shit about building them, but I know how to fix ones that are already built. Um, you know, I can just uh, uh, tell you a lot of pointers that you can do yourself. If you have questions, inbox me or send me a message on Facebook. I'm easy to find there. And I'll help you all I can. Uh, if you have any certain tunes you want to learn or whatever, licks, riffs, or whatever you want to do, or learn, learn uh, let me know. And, I, you know, as time permits, I'll do whatever I can to help you. Thanks again for watching, folks. Peace out. Cheers to all my subscribers, new ones, old ones, and ones to come. Please try to get everyone to subscribe. I don't think anybody will regret it. Thanks again for watching, and I must say, um, it looks like the butcher won again. 
Cheers, folks.